I would like to invite you to follow us on Facebook, New Hope International Church, YouTube, Varun Lahap Prasit, Instagram, New Hick or New Hope International Church, TikTok at New Hope International, so that you will never miss any good teaching. Pastor Dan, I would like to greet you from the ancient city of Corinth in Greece. And we are so proud of you that you are seeking the things of God. And we pray that God will really pour His truth, His favor, and His anointing on you while you are listening to this teaching. I'm so delighted to spend time with you and talk about the kingdom of God, about the truth of God. And I believe that the truth will set you free when you know the truth and you obey the word of God, you shall be blessed, you shall be successful, you shall be the head, not the tail. I believe that you want to have victory in life and give glory to the Lord. I would like to encourage you with the word of God. Let us pray first. Father, we thank you, Lord, that we can learn from you, we can hear your voice, and you shall, Lord, shine your light into our spirit and open our eyes to see the truth from heaven. Give us the revelation and help us, Lord, to add faith or connect the word of God to the faith in our heart, Lord. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. I would like to talk to you about living a victorious life, that we can run through the army of the enemy. We can jump over the walls of the hindrance of life. In Psalm chapter 18, verse 29, For by you I can run through a troop, and by my God I can leap over a wall. King David depended upon the Lord for victory over the enemy and for divine strength to accomplish amazing battles and the problems in life. He trusted in the Lord to enable him to scatter the enemy and to scale walls. In the ancient world, cities were protected by walls which were difficult to climb and there were not yet cannons to knock them down. A large part of military strategy was overcoming the defense provided by walls. So in this verse, King David credits God with giving him military skill and success. In our own strength, we cannot be victorious over the devil or difficulty or bad circumstances in life. But we can be victorious by trusting the Lord for success. Our God is a God of victory. He gives us supernatural power, breakthroughs, and favor and grace in order to overcome the enemy. And He is the commander of His army. We are the soldiers of Christ, and He will fight the battle for us. The book of Joshua chapter 1 verse 9, the Bible says, have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid, do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Thank God the Holy Spirit is in us all the time. He, he dwells in us. Before I became a Christian, I have to carry idols on my neck. I have to depend on idols to go with me. But after I received Jesus Christ and I was filled with the Holy Spirit, I know the one who is in me is greater than the one who is in the world. The Holy Spirit, who is so powerful, who created the whole universe, lives on the inside of me. And I fellowship with Him and I depend on His power. I depend on His guidance and His wisdom. I surrender to the Holy Spirit. I don't want to grieve Him. I don't want to sin against him. I want to obey God. When the Lord commissioned Joshua to lead the Israelites into Canaan and rout its strong inhabitants, he told Joshua not to fear, but to obey him and obey his word. God promised, do not be frightened and do not be dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. 
That's what Joshua chapter 1 verse 9 say. Jesus declare in John chapter 15 verse 5, Apart from me, you can do nothing. That's why we keep relationship with the Lord Jesus and walk in the Spirit. However, if you abide in Christ and His Word abide in you, you can ask whatever you wish and the Lord will grant your request. That's why we need to trust God, believe God, obey God, have fellowship with God and really love Him and always walk with Him every day, depend on Him every day. John chapter 15 verses 5 to 7 say, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up and thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. I experience this scripture. I want to live my life close to God. When I take care of my patient, I look at the MRI picture or CT scan. I hook up to God. I listen to the Holy Spirit and God told me the problems in the body of my patients. He even told me how to perform surgery or I should not perform surgery. He told me what to do. And I have a lot of good outcomes in my neurosurgery practice because I depend on God and I get close to God. And when I pray, God answer me. Actually, it just happened yesterday. My daughter got severe eye pain. When she blinked her eyes, it was sharp. Something injured her cornea or something like that, and the eye became red. The tears came out of her eyes all the time. This happened like 10 a.m. in the morning, and my wife and I called her at 6 p.m. She really suffered. And she could not go to see the doctor because she went out of town. We pray right away by faith. And we pray and we believe that because we remain in Christ and His word remain in us. He will answer us whatever we wish. It will be done for us. And you know, after we finish praying, in 10 minutes she called us back and say, Dad and Mom, the pain was totally gone. We could not explain in a natural or scientific way But God touched her and healed her yesterday. Wow. I see the importance of faith, the relationship with God, depend on God, victory that come from depending on His power and faith and get close to Him. To rely on the Lord makes us victorious just as it made David victorious. People cannot lock us down. People cannot lock us out of our destiny. God is our doorkeeper, not our boss, not our banker, not our neighbor, not our critics, not our enemies. Our enemies may shut a door, but God can take us right through it. He can make things happen that don't make sense. He doesn't have to open it. He may not do it in a traditional way. He has a supernatural way to do it. When I first moved to the U.S., it looked impossible that I would be accepted into the neurosurgery training program. The doors were closed everywhere. But we pray. We still went to church. We still serve God. And eventually, God performed a miracle. He twisted the arms of the professor and chairman of the Department of Neurosurgery at University of Washington. A neurosurgeon disappeared from the program, from the city actually, and they need another one. So the professor turned to me and said, okay, you got a job. God was doing something in a non-traditional way to help me open the door for me because I trust God. God is so good. He gave us victory. God can take us 
around what is blocking us. We face an obstacle and hindrances, but God can take us around. God can take us over someone who is trying to stop us. He can move someone out of the way who is holding us back. What God has destined for our life will override anyone or anything who is trying to stop us. My dear brother and sister, you just keep repenting, believing, reading the word, getting the promises of God, honoring God, doing your best, obeying Him, and the Lord will get you to where you need to be. Trust Him. Trust His timing. Trust in His power and His, His grace and His love for you. Don't be impatient because a door has not opened yet. God knows what He is doing. He's not going to let you miss out what He planned to give to you and your destiny. Stay in peace. Keep trusting Him. Keep believing, praying, obeying Him step by step. Your time is coming. Closed doors cannot keep you from your purpose. Isaiah 43 verses 1 to 3 say, Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. As we think about Isaiah 43, 2, our mind should be thinking of situation in which God has delivered us, delivered His people from water and fire. I remember the story of the parting of the Red Sea as Moses led his people out of Egypt. In Exodus chapter 15, verse 4, the Bible says, Pharaoh's chariots and his army, he has hurled into the sea. The best of Pharaoh's officers are drowned in the Red Sea. The reference to fire in Isaiah 43, verse 2, may be particularly reverent to many people today. We often have some sort of fire in our life. There is an old expression, the heat is on. That is an expression that the heat is on. I am going through fire right now. When you face pressure and the pressure gets high and strong, you feel the fire in your life and you say, Wow, the heat is on right now. In Daniel chapter 3, the Bible describes the story of three friends of Daniel who were literally subjected to heat and fire. Daniel's friends would not bow in worship to a statue of King Nebuchadnezzar. So the king had them tossed into a fire and had the furnace heated seven times hotter than usual. The Lord was with Daniel's friend and they were not harmed. They actually lived out the last sentence of Isaiah 43 verse 2. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. How did this happen? The furnace was seven times hotter than usual. The men should have been instantly consumed and killed by fire. The answer is in Daniel chapter 3, 24 to 25. Then King Nebuchadnezzar leaped to his feet in amazement and asked his advisors, Were not there three men that we tied up and threw into the fire? They replied, Certainly, your majesty. He said, Look, I see four men walking around in the fire, unbowed and unharmed, and the fourth looks like a son of the gods. Jesus was with them in their actual fire. He was the fourth man in that fiery furnace. Jesus is also with us in our fires when the heat is on. How do we know that Jesus also be with us in our fires? We can take comfort that He will be with us 
because He tell us in the Bible, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. In Matthew chapter 28, verse 20, God promises His Spirit is in us right now. He is with us. We live for the Great Commission. We live for the kingdom of God. We are hungry for God. We go to church. We listen to the word. We serve Him. We want to please Him. The Bible says that we all go through the fire. The scripture is promising that it will happen to us. But when it does, God is also promising that He will be there with us and we will survive. We will have victory. One more promise, the fire, water, and other problem will ultimately result in good. God promises in Romans chapter 8, verse 28. Let me read for you. Romans 8, 28. This is a promise of God. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. Do you love God? I want to encourage you. Love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. Live your life for the kingdom of God. Keep building your faith. Trust God. Honor God. Do the best you can. Get involved in expanding His kingdom. Seek the kingdom of God first. Obey Him. Repent quickly when you make some mistake. And always fellowship with the Holy Spirit who lives on the inside of you. Learn how to be led by the Holy Spirit. Trust that God will do something for you to give you victory in His way. Trust God, okay? Please listen to the teaching called Spirit Let Living so you learn how to walk with the Spirit. I believe and declare that you shall have victory over any obstacles and hindrances and problems in your life. The Lord will be with you always to the end of the age and you shall see victory after victory and your life will give glory to the Lord. Let us pray. Father, we thank you that other people and circumstances cannot keep us from what you have purposed for us. Thank you, Lord, that you are the doorkeeper of our life. We believe that you will take us through or over or around Whatever stands in our way, Lord. We thank you, Father. Bless my brothers and sisters. Lord, help them to have more faith, more trust in you. Help them to have confidence that you are with them and you are, Lord, the answer to their life. You are the way maker, the promise keeper. You are the savior of their life, Father. We thank you, Lord, and give them victory all the days of their life, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. I'm so glad that we can read the Word of God together and build our faith by hearing and hearing of the Word of God. Pastor Dan, I love you and we want to see you have a victorious life and you give all the glory to God. And I believe you will have a lot of rewards in heaven as well. God bless you. I'm so proud of you that you listen to the whole teaching and I believe that the promise of God will come true to your life. In Psalm 119 verses 98 to 99 say, Your commands make me wiser than my enemies, for they are ever with me. I have more insight than all my teachers, for I meditate on your statutes. I believe the Word of God will make you wiser than other people, and you will practice what you learn. God bless you. I will see you in other teachings. Thank you so much for spending time with me. God poured His fire on the day of Pentecost. And He still opened heaven to pour out His fire in our generation. May the fire of the Lord burn on the inside of you. Brings revival into your life. 
send you out to preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. May He use you to be a carrier of the fire of revival. May the Lord anoint you. May the fire of God burn every day on the inside of you. And the Lord will be glorified through you. May the grace of God work in your life and you become fruitful and you will have many rewards in heaven. May the Lord get the glory through your life.